Immortal Unchained is a new action RPG coming this September. It aims to make its own mark on the Souls-like genre. This is a genre that we have seen continually grow with From Software, continually finding new ways to upgrade their formula. And we've also seen other developers putting their own style on it. This was seen with Neo and The Surge last year. Immortal Unchained follows suit with the developers creating a Souls-like experience, but with a big difference that you'll notice right out of the gate. There's a focus on range combat and firearms compared to the focus on the melee fighting of the prior Souls games. The shooting sort of works like a normal third-person shooter with buttons for aiming down the sights, but you'll also have access to the lock-on mechanic. While I do like that they let you freely aim your weapon, the sensitivity can feel a bit off, making you rely on that lock-on for shooting. And you'll want to rely on that lock-on for shooting as it's a great means so that you do not waste any of your ammo. With using the lock-on for most of your shooting, the combat can feel a bit like a Souls game in a shooter from the PS2 and original Xbox era. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, as I found the gunplay within this RPG to be quite fun. It is satisfying to gun down enemies. What adds to the combat are the different guns and their special moves. So with this game, you'll have a stamina bar that is used for your melee attacks. The melee attack is only one button, instead of having a light and heavy attack. Dodging and sprinting will also consume your stamina. You also have a magic bar of sorts, which is your blue bar. You can use this energy as a means to execute a weapon-specific special shot that can do a lot of damage to your enemies. The first assault rifle that you have will spit out a bunch of shots for its special move, along with the second assault rifle that you get, which has more of an incendiary round to it, and its special move will spit out a flamethrower-like blast. The shotgun's pretty cool because it unloads all of its bullets into the enemies and does maximum damage. These can be devastating to your opponents and great to pull off since it will rip many of them to shreds and help you crowd control many of the rooms. You'll find yourself using the melee attack as a means to finish off off some of the stunned enemies, or as a way to conserve some of your ammo to be able to take out some of those lesser enemies. There doesn't seem to be a way to focus on a melee only build, since it is obvious that how they wanted to implement the gameplay here is by having range be the priority and melee be used as a second means of attacking. It would have been interesting to allow that type of variety within the game so that you could go completely range based and then have a run through where you had a bit of a mix of ranged and melee and then go for more of a traditional Souls-like experience by going full melee. Prime and the instigators of the Prime Azurian War with their victory, the Prime claimed the core, and with it, the home of the monolith. It bestowed great power unto them, and gave them dominion over all life. Great cities were built. Technological advancements and trade allowed the worlds to flourish and bloom. And thus, the Golden Age began. This was the time of heroes, where legends were born and their stories told, and so it was for eons. But this was not to last. An evil is spreading through the cosmos. Cutscenes are used to provide some context to the world along with what your role is in it and the game's lore. 
The scenes so far seem to present themselves within these concept art-like stills. This doesn't make for the most compelling means to tell its story, but this is just the preview build of the game, and what the whole game contains remains to be seen, especially if the game's narrative will end up being compelling. This is an area that could help Immortal Unchained stand out from its contemporaries. I enjoy many games with this playstyle, but I have yet to play one of them with a compelling narrative. The games made by From Software are rich with lore and have a good use of visual storytelling, especially as you're exploring the environments and wandering about, you're wondering what happened here. What caused this? And what are these hostile creatures? The world can do an effective job at getting you into the game, but I never felt connected to the narrative. The same goes for Neo and the Surge. Immortal could potentially fill a void delivering a memorable story with this type of gameplay, and I hope they do. Even if Immortal doesn't deliver a memorable story, the gameplay does provide a good enough hook to make you want to continue with the game. You'll gain experience points that you can use to upgrade your character by buying points to improve different skills. As you explore the environments and defeat enemies, you'll gain different materials that you can use to upgrade your guns. Earning new weapons and upgrading them can be satisfying. The game likes to hide chests in these little hidden nook-like areas within the map, so you'll want to explore as much as possible. Another staple of this series is the interconnected nature of them. Games like this are always very fun to explore and engage with, because you're always opening up new paths and you never know what you're going to find. One of the best parts about exploring these types of games is being able to open up a shortcut that leads you back to your save spot so that you can save in the game. Immortal Unchained has some of this within its game, but it really does have this sense of linearity to it, really wanting to push you forward within the game. Though there were a few instances where I ended up circling back to be able to go back to a previous save spot. Though I only played the first two levels, so this may be different in other areas of the game. It's also good to note here too that the levels are sectioned off into different areas and aren't completely interconnected. The first area featured a lot of confined smaller spaces, and the difficulty for the most part was not too hard. With the game allowing you to level up from the outset, where many of these games require you to get to a certain point, attempt the first boss fight, or sometimes even beat them. While not overly difficult, I do like the potential of fighting bosses within the game. The first boss was fun, but not too hard. You had to make sure to dodge and zip around and get around his attacks and keep pummeling him with bullets. The first area did seem like it had the training wheels on, and then I got to the second area. I died immediately as I was surprised by enemies just right out of the gate. This was something I noticed happening in this area a lot that really didn't happen in the prior area. There were many instances where enemies would be coming out of the ground and trying to surprise attack me. It made for some intense situations and kept me on my toes along with some of the level's traps. Upon death, you'll need to try to work back to your point that you died so that you can reclaim all of your experience points that you just lost. While Immortal Unchained seems to have a layer of roughness to its experience, I'm hoping that it can work out many of these areas before it releases. Nonetheless, I found myself enjoying the different take with the combat for the Souls-like genre. I enjoyed the shooting and found it satisfying to shoot enemies, gather better weapons, upgrade myself and my guns. I think these could help to create a compelling experience. If the story succeeds, that will be another plus for this game. Keep an eye on this one, as this fall is always an overcrowded area with many big games coming out, and I think this one is going to go under the radar. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other ones. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out my Patreon page at the end of this video in the description down below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.